Hi guys and welcome back. Sorry for not uploading the past couple of days. Pretty much I've been extremely ill from the Southampton trip. The fact that I've got my top off in minus 5 degrees over in Southampton probably has something to do with my illness. Thankfully though I'm a lot better today and the most important part being is that I'm going to be well enough to go to the game next Tuesday. The second leg of the semi-final. Oh my god I can't wait for that match. But anyway guys, if you're new to the channel, make sure you get down there, hit that subscribe button. We are on the road to 40,000 subscribers now. We are getting extremely close to that milestone. So if you haven't already subscribed, make sure to do so. If you enjoy what you're watching as well, make sure you get down there, smash like button. And finally, question of the day. I know it's quite early, but I want to hear your score prediction for the second leg. Still happening at St. James's Park. How are things going to turn out? But as for the transfer news today now, so... Some interesting developments for Leicester City's came out this morning where an opportunity now is available for Newcastle to potentially go on and buy James Madison. So, that, so I'll explain all of that in a bit. As well as that, we've got the Anthony Gordon drama. Has he turned up the train today? What's going on with him? So we're getting to him as well. As well as that, we've got a few potential outgoings for Newcastle. But plenty of stuff, as always, regarding transfer news. But without further ado, let's get into it. First off, we are going to quickly talk about Tuesday's match with Joe Linton because he was in court yesterday regarding his drink driving case. So, of course, he pleaded guilty. Now, the legal law in the UK for drink driving is 35 mg. Joe Linton's was always for 43. So, that's pretty much one drink over, which, to be fair, that can be a mistake at times. But still, though, he has broken the law. And as a result, he's been fined £31,000 and he will also be banned from driving for the next nine months. And that's before the club even punishes him internally. So, my honest thoughts on that, well, um, my biggest concern, Percy, is if the results were like 70, 80, for example, where he was just taking the, the complete piss. But no, it's 43. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to dig on him for that. Listen, what's done is done. He's been punished for those actions and he can return to the football pitch now and everything's been settled. So, yeah, uh, I just want to address that quickly in case you haven't already heard about it. As for outgoings now, it's confirmed that Chris Wood is not the only player that will be leaving Newcastle in this window. Carl Dolo has agreed, according to Mark Douglas, he's agreed a loan deal at Hull City until the end of the season. With a potential in there, if Hull City won him, they can buy him in the summer. we always seen this one coming, I think, especially when we recalled Martin De Braga from his loan deal. The fact that the club's decided to keep De Braga for now meant that somebody else had to go. And I think Carl Dolo was probably the one he always going to pick. Mark Gillespie's just somewhere out of the 25-man squad. And other than that, Carrius has been offered an extension, meaning that Cardona has to be the one that goes. So there's not really much I can say. They'd be honest, did a great job in the championship, but that was a long time ago. And he's a player that's been sticking around the last what, six, seven years or something. It's crazy how long some of these players have been here for. But I think now is probably the right time for them to go. Best of luck to him. I've got a feeling we're not going to see him again in any castle shirt. So I wish him all the best and thank you for your time at the club. Bruno Gomez has put out quite an interesting post on social media of an eye emoji. Now, some of castle fans straight away are questioning, oh my God, this is a new sign. What does Bruno know? Listen, let's not get carried away. I don't think Bruno would know when a new player comes. I mean, the players don't find out until he's slightly before the fans would. It's one of them ones where the players won't find out until... The signing comes in for medical, which is normally about a day before it gets announced to social media. So I don't think it's that. My honest opinion is I think he's going to get a contract extension, which is still pretty bloody big for us. So yeah, Masby deserves a contract extension. That's huge for the club. And I, that's my honest opinion. I think it is a contract extension that he's implying at and 100% deserves it. And it's very, very good for us as well. Now it's time to talk about Anthony Gordon because what the hell is going on with him? I mean, from what I've seen first hand, he's been a massive pain in the back seat over the past couple of days, and I explained why in just a moment. But pretty much, uh, Anthony Gordon has told Evan that he wants to leave a club and just trying to win. He has no intentions of staying any longer. For the sake of his career, he wants to move in this window, which as a player, he has every right to say that. If he's not happy at Everton, of course he has a right to hand in a transfer request. And it's between Newcastle and Tottenham for the two teams that want him now. As for the Anthony Gordon side of things now, so he was actually scheduled on Tuesday to miss training, so the club allowed him to miss training for whatever reason. I don't know if he's speaking to, speaking to club representatives or, or what, but he was allowed to miss training on the Tuesday. But on the Wednesday and the Thursday, he was supposed to go back into training. Uh, he's pretty much sky training. He's refused to go in. Everton weren't expecting that at all, and the player is honestly just sky training for two days. This morning, Anthony Gordon has returned to training for the first time since that little time off from Everton. 
Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I kind of don't like that, to be honest. Yes, of course, the player wants to leave the club, but ultimately, he's getting paid a serious amount of money on a weekly basis and he's refusing to go to training. He's just trying to force his way out of the club. It's just a bit of a bad attitude almost now. If Newcastle sign him, obviously, I'm hoping he's not like that. I hope that's just because he wants to leave the club and he's desperate to get out. But at the same time, though, when you're paying upwards of 40 to 50 million pounds in this guy, you want, you want to make sure that you can keep him under control. If that was a Newcastle player, for example, that was refusing to go to train, I would be livid. So it's one of them ones where it's a bit of hindsight, really. Now, if he comes at the football club and he's well behaved, doesn't do anything wrong, and he does his job, then yeah, I've got no issues with him. But I, I feel like when you're paying 40 to 50 million pounds in a guy, which. Let's be honest with him, he plays for Everton, so he's not got great teammates. His stats aren't great as a result. It's a bit of a, almost a bit of a gamble, really. He's quick, he looks lively at times, but when he plays for a better team, how good is he really going to be? It's one of them ones where, I don't know, I haven't watched enough of him, to be honest, to really judge him. I feel like £50 million pounds is a serious amount of money, so the club has to be absolutely certain that they want Anthony Gordon if they are going to spend that kind of money on him. As for James Madison, some quite interesting developments that came out from Leicester City this morning, which Newcastle fans, as a result, have joined the dots together and went, well, because of this happening, Newcastle can now go on and buy James Madison, or Newcastle now have a good opportunity to go and buy the player, and we should do this. So fans have been quite eager once this news came out, and I can see the logic to it, to be fair, so I'm going to tell you the story now, and I'm going to tell you my honest thoughts on it, so... This morning, Fabrizio Romano came out in exclusive saying that Leicester and advanced talk to sign Tite, the Leon right winger. Now, the reason why this links to James Madison is, one, because James Madison has been playing on the right-hand side in recent weeks due to how he limited that area of the few days for Leicester. And the second reason being is that when a new player comes in, I mean, with James Madison anyway, he's got 18 months in his contract. If he doesn't leave in this window, I think he's going to leave in the summer. I can't see Leicester keeping a hold of him because Leicester were in that position now where they're, just, they're golden years ago. They're never ever going to get back to where they once were a few years ago. It's one of them ones where James Madison's been a long-term player for them, but if he wants to progress in his career, he just can't stay at Leicester. He's just he's been as bluntly possible to the Leicester fans there. So, uh, with Newcastle breathing down his neck in the summer, I remember two official bids were made for James Madison. And a fan's argument against Anthony Gordon as well. If you pay £50 million pounds for Anthony Gordon, why not just pay the 60 and get James Madison? Anthony Gordon can be a bit of an unknown entity, whereas with James Madison, you know exactly what you're getting. And at the same time, people might argue in Anthony Gordon's situation go well. James Madison's injury prone, Anthony Gordon isn't so... His value as a result is going to be higher. And as well as Anthony Gordon is a lot younger than James Madison. So it's one of them ones where you can't argue both sides. But I think I honestly would prefer James Madison though. I think midfielder wise, we just need a bit more depth in there. Especially with Shelley's injury and Joe Willick and Sean Long. So I just feel like we need one more midfielder in there just to really sort everything out. And at the same time, if we need to, I guess he can play in the right hand side. So he's quite a versatile player, Madison. And... I would prefer him to Anthony Gordon, but as for the actual transfer news though on him, yeah, I can see logic to it, so let's wait the next day or two to see if any news pops up about him, but I can't see why fans would think that, and it is definitely a possibility where the club could decide to go on for the plan now that a new sign is coming to Leicester, or probably make it more, Leicester probably be more reluctant to go, well, you know what, Madison, you've been here a long time, we, we are willing to sell you in this window, but that's a bit of, I guess just a bit of thought process at the end there, but yeah, definitely keep an eye on it though. Well, anyway, guys, we're going to wrap things up there. I hope you enjoyed watching the video today. Make sure to let me know down in the comment section your thoughts and everything I've discussed in today's video. Again, apologies, I've been off the last couple of days. I've just been very ill, but frankly, I'm on the mend now, so I should be well enough to make videos whenever stuff comes out. So keep an eye on the channel for things like that. And if not, I will see you next Tuesday for that. Southampton semi-final game so we'll briefly talk about that before I go off I just can't wait for that game honestly biggest match in my lifetime Newcastle are got the front foot in now they've got one foot through the door Southampton they have to win at St James's Park to either take it to Penza or to go through the tie they have to win the game at St James's Park with war flags there with all the fans eager again where I just it's going to be near impossible for them so let's make sure we have the best possible atmosphere and the team will do its job on the pitch.
But yeah, exciting things coming ahead. I can't wait for that. But thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.